In this video, we'll talk about how to find the ionic charge for transition metals. So when we find ionic charge, to look for ionic charge, we often think of this pattern on the periodic table. Group one forms one plus ions, group two, two plus, then we skip the transition metals. That's what we're interested in in this video, but we skip them and we go three plus, four plus or minus, then three minus, two minus, one minus, zero. And that's very useful to understand the general trend for ionic charge on the periodic table. It's a bit of an oversimplification though. If we looked at a more detailed periodic table, we'd see that we still have group one, they're all one plus, two, two plus. So here are the transition metals, but we have these post-transition metals, some of these down here like lead. So this is a little more detailed and you'll note that there's really no four plus or four minus on this table. So here we have three transition metals though that always have the same ionic charge. Silver, one plus. And then zinc and cadmium, they're always two plus. But for the rest of them, some of these transition metals down here, we really don't know what the ionic charge is. To find it, we'll look and see what it's bonded to. So these are all positive. We'll see what they bond to here, and then we can work backwards to determine the ionic charge. So let's try that, see how it looks. Let's try copper oxide. So copper transition metal, it's right around here. We don't know its charge, but oxygen, we know that oxygen right here has a two minus ionic charge. And this copper oxide right now, it's neutral. There's no plus or minus out here. So all the charges, they add up to zero. The net charge is zero. Oxygen, two minus. That means for them all to add up to zero, the copper has to be two plus and that's its ionic charge. We would say for the name, copper two oxide. And the two would be a Roman numeral in parentheses after the word copper. So copper two oxide here. Let's try another one, maybe a little more complicated. How about Fe2O3? This is a component of rust. So we don't know what iron is, it's a transition metal, but we do know again that oxygen, that has that two minus charge. So we'll put our two minus charge up here. And we know that all the charges on the Fe2O3 compound, they have to add up to zero. So three times two minus, that's six minus. So this part of the compound is six minus. So the question is to get six plus, what is the charge on the iron? Two times something will give us six plus. So two times three plus, that'll give us six plus. These will cancel out, they'll add up to zero. So the ionic charge on the iron is three plus. We call this iron three oxide. And note that this three plus, there's two iron atoms. So each one is three plus. Now you try one. How about CuCl2? For CuCl2, again, copper, that's a transition metal right around here. Chlorine, that's right here. It's in group 17, sometimes called 7A. All of these have the one minus ionic charge. So write one minus up here. Two times one minus, that's two minus. So the copper, to have this two plus, so these add up to zero, has to be two plus. Kind of imagine a one times two plus gives us the two plus. Net charge is zero. The charge on copper is two plus. We call it copper two chloride. Pause and try this one. So for Fe2S3, it's pretty much the same as Fe2O3 because these are in the same group. Overall, neutral compound. So we look up oxygen right there, two minus, three times two minus, so we have the six minus. This has to be six plus two times three plus, that'll give us six plus, net charge is zero, iron three sulfide. We'll wrap up with one more, ZnCl2. So again, neutral compound, all the charges add up to zero. Chlorine, that's right here, that has that one minus. We have two of them, so two minus the zinc has to be two plus. But we also know zinc is an exception for the transition metals. It's always two plus. So we could have known that without figuring out the chlorine. 
If we name this compound, because zinc is always 2 plus, we can just call it zinc chloride. We don't have to call it zinc 2 chloride. It's just zinc chloride. This is Dr. B with the ionic charges for transition metals, and thanks for watching.